Shalom. Call Hello, Yahweh Bashan Al Shai, Bahashem, Rakaha, Kwadash. Double honors unto the apostles, double honors unto the elder bishops. Salutations to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. To the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth that be like unto the speckled bird among the heathens that look like the heathens. And to the Akwaf that are listening and learning, to you I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolma from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago. Coming at you with another lesson in truth. And uh, matter of fact, just give me a second, let me close these blinds to take the glare off the screen. better uh, all right so like it i um this is a video i received from the mighty saint benji uh went a well i don't know if he sent it to me last night or earlier this morning i woke up and opened up the phone and uh and i saw it and i actually had another video that i was going to go in on that uh the beloved elder brother yashawamba sent to me uh I gotta respond to that, but uh, this one took precedence once I uh, I did it, and, and Lord willing, I'll get to the other one later on today. But uh, this is a video by Redacted, and it's called "The Whole World Hates America." As a matter of fact, let me see if I can pan out a little bit and bring the title into it. Let's see if we can get the title in the frame. There you go. Yeah, it's called The Whole World Hates America, Turkey Says, and America Using Europe as a Pawn. And America's using all its allies as a pawn. All right. And, um, you know, and we receive so much hate and channels deleted and videos deleted for saying this truth. But now the world is seeing it. So this gospel has gone to the four corners of the earth and is having an effect on the world. We are the, the true direct threat. Without any violence, just by preaching the word in season and out of season, right? Because we've literally watched the world change and the things that we prophesy uh, begin to come to pass just as it is, it is written. But um, I'm going to play this video, probably not the entire video. It's, it's less than 10 minutes long, but he says a lot of things that are so true and so condemning. So without any further ado, redacted. These are some amazing words by the Turkish interior minister, uh, Suleiman Soylu, um, who out with a new statement in a television interview. Now, let me let, tell you this, too. The Turks are also Amalek. All right. You got to remember when the Khazarian Empire split. All right. And you remember the, the, the flag in Crimea, the symbol on that flag is the same symbol that they had when they were the Khazarian Empire. They used to wear a necklace like that around the neck. All right. Half the empire uh, embraced Judaism and the other half became Muslim. All right. So the, these Ottoman Turks that took over, uh, uh, that took over Turkey. All right. The, uh, the people that took over that area from Jape were these, uh, these, these Amalekites. All right. Keep that in mind. Because we're going to bring out a scripture, you know, about that a little later. And this is sending shockwaves right now through the international uh, international diplomatic circles on how to handle this right now. Uh, Turkish minister Suleiman claims the world, the whole world, not just the world, the whole world hates America. He says in this interview. I'm going to go through this BNN interview from the BNN network. It's a pretty bold statement. Like he's not pulling, he's not pulling back at all. It's a pretty true statement as well. All right. I've, I've got clients, uh, former clients, I would say. And this was you after the first crash, because the things that, that were happening in America after that first crash affected the other nations. I um, mean, the same way it's affecting them today. It's just affecting them even worse now. But the same sentiment. All right, because I had uh, a client, Terry G, all right, and Nikki G, all 
All right, the two of she, neither he or her are, are related, but you know, both their last names began with G, and they're both Edomites, and they're both natives to different parts in, in Europe, and they could speak the languages. And when they would go home, uh, they wouldn't, you know, I remember Nikki telling her children, you know, we're gonna speak Greek when we, when you know, we're not, don't speak English, and uh, and there was a really uh, negative sentiment toward Americans in Greece, even going back to 2006, 2007, 2008. It was a very, ne 2009, very negative back then, all right? Uh, around that time, before Terry left, you know, uh, he, he's originally from Ireland, but, you know, he's, he's a very wealthy man. He travels, you know, would travel the world all the time. But, uh, he, you know, he, he told me, we were talking about this stuff way back then about the collapse and the fall of the dollar and you know and, and he was like you know what he would <laughs> he was like I'm I'm beginning to think that you might be on to something there you know with his Irish accent <laughs> and he would <laughs> he would always say squire <laughs> like I was his squire his servant right uh and he would say uh that you know it was the first time that he was traveling about in Europe and in one of the places he was in was in Turkey but he said that when he was throughout Europe, the dollar was king, and even back in the in the mid in the early two thousands, uh, and you know, around two thousand eight, two thousand nine, uh, two thousand seven, two thousand eight, two thousand nine, even before the crash came, that none of the vendors, none of the taxis, nobody wanted the greenback. Everyone wanted to be paid in euro or other currency. That was a sign. That was a heavy sign even back then. All right. Let me grab a quick scripture. This is uh, Revelation 17 and 16. Because this is the inevitable. It says, And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. Those ten horns is NATO. NATO started with ten countries. All right. Not twelve like it says when you look it up now. When you Google it, uh, uh, you know, 12, 13, 14 years ago, it told you that it changed. They changed They changed it on the internet when you look it up now. Like they changed a lot of things because the Hebrews, the Hebrew Israelites, not black Hebrew Israelites, you can't call all these uh, other people that are claiming their Israelite heritage black. You know, the black, black uh, it's, a, it's a made up term. All right, they made it up. Just like they made up white. Those are made up social constructs to control the narrative. All right. But um, it's, once again, it says. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. All the nations are going to turn on America, which is spiritual Egypt, spiritual Babylon. All right. Spiritual Rome is all those places because it it it, it here in this place. All those ancient wicked customs are practiced and used. All right. You got the Babylonian obelisk, you know, all over the place. You, you see you see this uh, this Turkish person. He's still wearing a Western style suit. He's wearing a necktie. And you can see that the shirt is white and not a skin. You see, they made it up. It's no such thing as white people. All right. You got to love this high definition technology now. You know, you even look at the redacted guy. People will look at him and say, oh, that's a white guy. He's not white. He's kind of pinkish red. He's red. You know, those Edomites that the Bible speaks of, those red people. But, but let's let it continue. The whole world hates the United States. A lot of people are like, thank you for saying the obvious. Thank you for saying the truth, the thing that most people realize and, and won't say out loud. Others are saying, how dare you? How dare you? So Turkish you know, interior minister has claimed you know, the those like the people like finally the United States is admitting about the, the vaccine uh, uh, injuries and deaths and things of that nature. All right. And you had the people who were looking at the evidence and calling it. And then you had the people who blindly follow whatever their rulers say. And a lot of it is simply followed out of, out of, out of a superiority mindset and 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 uh, and blind. And, and, and a blind belief that they're they're right and that they're the people of the Lord and they couldn't be wrong. How dare you say we're wrong? 
Uh, we don't care if we took your land and killed you and you know pushed you off your land. We're here now and we're 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 right because the Lord the Lord did this for us. You know, and you really have people in America, you have Edomites who have that mindset. And they refuse to look at facts that prove their belief. It's, it's you know that cognitive dissonance to the to the to the tenth power here in America with these Edom, these proud Edomites here. All right, they refuse to look at evidence that re, that refutes or proves their beliefs to be wrong. I mean, just look at, at, at Doctor uh, 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 Michael Brown and, and Vocab Malone. All right, they get proven wrong every day, but yet they they duck and dodge facts. They duck and dodge history. They duck and dodge, uh, uh, you know, the prophecy scriptures just so that they can push their their false uh, everybody loves and God loves everybody and everybody can make it. But but clearly white people are the chosen. They push that lie. Whole world hates America and suggests that Europe is merely a pawn of the United States. Son of a bitch. Now I watched this video and it didn't play this the first time. Okay. And it and guess what? It'll make that the thumbnail. That's the the bullshit the YouTube does. Instead of the video being the you know instead of the thumbnail being what 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 you're looking at now, you know it'll it'll actually show that advertisement as a damn thumbnail. So let's get a little deeper. He downplayed Europe's significance, saying that. The trend is in America's favor. So the idea that America wants Europe to be in decline is totally in America is to, that that America wants Europe to be in decline is totally in America's favor. Like That's the destruction true. of the Nord Stream pipeline. A lot of people in the chat saying, "Yep, but he's right. It's true. Absolutely, he's right. He's one hundred percent correct." Yes. And you have to wonder, like when we were just in the Middle East, like people were very, very kind to us, but they became incredibly, not, I cannot tell you the change in their facial expression when they found out, oh, we're American, like, oh, American, okay. And we would say, but we live, we live in, you know, we now live in Portugal. Oh, Portugal, like, we love Port, like, it was unbelievable, like the transition from and mind and there's you, there's an awareness that oh, but you got out. And mind you, the people in Europe that are currently in Europe, you know the uh, uh, the ten toes that shall hate the whore, they're not indigenous to Europe. People that look like him are not indigenous to Europe at all. That's another false uh, concept. That is another uh, false doctrine that has been pushed. All right, they actually came from Mount Seir and belong in Mount Seir. All right. That that was their their uh, their home, all right. They came from Mount Seir. Um, they are not indigenous to Europe at all. And Europe was uh, was indigenous to the to the dark flesh sons of Japheth. Japheth was not so called white people, all right. Japheth was not Caucasians. The Etruscans, the Minoans, the the actual the real Greeks, you know, the real Romans were not, all right. So all these uh, uh, pale nations that spawned from that are the people that came there after the fact when when Alexander of Macedon, an Edomite, he can be traced back to Esau, Edom biblically and historically, uh, took it over and drove those brown people out and, and made them uh, uh, tributaries and subject to him and his armies and stuff. All right. But, you know, just to bring out that fact, but I'm going to bring up this scripture real quick. This is a uh, Sirach 10 and 8. And it reads, because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. And, you know, Esau did that to get into power, but now he's been doing it to his own uh, uh, allies. All right? Deceitful dealings uh, to keep America on top, but hurting his allies as he does it with all his policies and his... Uh, uh, you know, in all these different, uh, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Sanctions and things of that nature, embargoes that he put on all these other nations. And he does that to the detriment of his own allies and partners. All right. Bringing you that, that democracy, which always comes with a grenade. Democracy comes with violence. All right. And the setting up of armies into your homelands. 
all right? Real slick-like, all right? Because he set up all these bases all over Europe, all right? To, to even to, so that he could even bully his own allies if he need, if need be. This is Daniel 8 and 25, and it reads, And through his policy, also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but shall be broken without hand. So, you know, I mean, you ever seen a commercial when they show you, they show you the Navy all over, the, you know, all over the seas and they say a force for good, you know, for good of who? For the good of whom? Out of America, like you left because you know it's corrupt and criminal and you left and you made a decision to whatever. Like there's like this shift in that. And that's not why we decided. We just wanted a better life for our children. And we just, you know, I'd lived there most of my life and enough was enough. And I don't have a nine to five job anymore. And I wanted to see the world. So it, it wasn't like that. And most, most of the, you know, governments around the world have a problem, right? It's not like there's like a, a rose petal, a rose bush over here. And these, all these other ones are cactus, you know? And you know why that is? Why they have a problem? Because they don't follow the guidelines. They're, you know, the majority of, of these uh, NATO nations, uh, outside of a few of them, well, the ones that have joined, but the, in the beginning, they were all so-called Christian. Yet they followed not the guide. You know, they had no business picking up the book in the first place. Right? But this is Isaiah 8 and 20. And it reads, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, is because there is no light in them, all right? They couldn't even admit uh, what the Israelites looked like, what the Lord and the angels looked like, even though it's written in the book, all right? They even begin to, uh, that's why you got so many different versions of the Bible now, all right? Because all the, the scriptures that, that give you the physical description of the Lord, you know, and the physical description of the angels, the, the, the physical description of the council of heaven, the physical description of the Lord's people here on earth, well, they ignore those scriptures or rewrite them so that they could, you know, twist and manipulate what they're actually saying. You know, and, and use the word black, black, black all day long. But when it speaks about, you know, uh, uh, the skin of the Israelites being black, the skin of Judah being black, all of a sudden black doesn't mean black anymore. Unless you're talking about a black person in America. And black means black, very black. Oh, I tell you, boy, let's go. Let's go with it. So they all have issues, right? And let's be honest. Um, but it, it's amazing to see the sort of like they they are they're absolutely aware of, and they're sort of play playing to our. Oh, we're just gonna be nice. It's the Americans. They want to come here and see these things. That's that's nice. But then when when they realize we're journalists, they like would like look back and like oh, so you might understand then what we're going through. And when we ask them, hey, were you here in the square, in the interior square right over here uh, for the Arab Spring? And they said, no, 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 no. And when we would say to them, oh, because you realize it's a Western-backed coup attempt, right? Exactly. Western. Yes, exactly. No, <laughs> we don't want U.S. in meddling in what we what we do and how we live our lives. That's exactly why we weren't here in Tahrir Square, like doing the supporting. We don't want our daughters uh, being with 50 men before they get married. We don't want our daughters twerking. We don't want our sons to not call themselves men and call themselves by alphabet names and all that stuff, nor our daughters. They don't want that. All right. And America tries to bully you into accepting these things. You know, uh, and if you speak against them, you're a bad person and they'll blackball you, cut off lines of credit, uh, ruin your business and everything else. The Arab Spring and do all that. So you, you realize like the American meddling is far and wide. There's a deep awareness about the hatred of America around the world. Sure, they love American culture and they love Hollywood and love those sorts of things. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about American imperialism and American government and American military. That's what he's talking about here. He says, America, United States is losing its credibility on the global stage. It's lost it. Is that the case? What do you guys think? Is America losing its credibility on the world stage? This is what the Turkish uh, interior minister says. And he says it's attributed to various factors, such as foreign policy decisions, economic policies, 
and perceived cultural dominance. Mm. Perceived cultural dominance. This is also interesting, right? America has this perception that it is culturally dominant, that like what America produces in terms of music and entertainment et cetera, is culturally dominant. Would you guys say that that's the... And to a certain degree, that has been, tr that has been true. That's because America has dominated the airways. Um, and, and the other countries wouldn't go against America uh, to a certain extent because they have to do business with America. They have to convert their money over to dollars. It just made it easier to, to, to go along, to get along, so that they, business can continue as usual. But no one likes to be a, 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 a yes man. And America put its allies in a position to where they were kind of forced to be yes men. And, and they're tired of it. They're tired of it because they're like, we got our own ways and our own ways of life and our own ideas and things that we want to do. And we're tired of supporting, you, uh, uh, you know, your way because we have to use your money and because you got militaries uh, surrounding my country all over the damn place. You know, to the north of me, to the south of me, to the east of me, to the west of me, you got militaries. All right. America put all those 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 military bases around its allies to keep the allies in check. And people are waking up to that fact. The smart ones saw it all along. They just couldn't. They just weren't in a position to fight it. All right. But it's all going to come down to. We're getting dangerously close. To, to the to the uh, to the nations uh, destroying the whore. The so whore is going to, uh, you know, this this third world's war is is it's on. All right. It's not on. It's on, as they say in Chicago. It's on, nigga. It's on. And, it, and it's getting ready to go down. All right? This is uh, Second Ezra. Uh, Eleven and forty. Why am I in Isaiah? I know I didn't push Isaiah. I guess I did. And it reads, and the fourth came and overcame all the beasts that were past and had power over the world with great fearfulness and over the whole compass of the earth with much wicked oppression. So long time dwelt here upon earth with deceit. All right. As a matter of fact, let me start at 39. That's what I really wanted to read because the 40 applies, but it was really 39 that I wanted. All right, uh, it says, Are not thou it that remainest of the four beasts whom I made to reign in my world that the end of their times might come through them? All right. So Esau Edom is going to be ended by the Lord, but he's going to use Esau Edom to do it. They're going to go to war with each other. And they're going to destroy the beast. All right. And then the, then the elect are going to come down off those chairs and subjugate everyone. All right, because China and Russia are not going to rule. They don't have necks. The Israelites do. So with that, I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, by Hashem, Rakakwadash, Wa'ababa, Ba'al, Kwam, Yasharala, Shalawam.